Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, we have, of course, a few more things to talk about this morning. Moving now to discussing the possibility of another, maybe a full lockdown, maybe a partial one um, across the country and the economic implications of this lockdown. Earlier in the year, of course, uh, everyone was a, a witness to what the country and the country's economy had um, suffered as a result of the first lockdown. We've invited this morning Bolahan Olujede uh, to quickly join us and share his thoughts. Thank you for your time. Good morning to you, sir. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Um, but so let's get right to it. With uh, The last time we spoke about lockdown, you were in the studio and you weren't very optimistic about us going into another lockdown. But... Has events in the past 24 hours changed your mind from restrictions on the number of gatherings to closing down of bars and restaurants to government issuing an order for civil servants from grade level 12, I think, not to go to work for the next six weeks? Have you changed your mind that we are likely to get into another lockdown? Uh, well, um, I, I believe... This decision is made to be evaluated by each of the states of the federation. Um, it's, it's not as if it's imposed directly on them. And each of these states should consider, you know, it, it's a very delicate balance we have right here. Um, shutting down the economy um, might not be in the best interest of all of us because of the gargantuan loss we have over the last two quarters. But at the same time, I understand the position of the government uh, as far as the second wave of uh, COVID is concerned. So what is taking us to this position? What is bringing us here is the fact that our people refuse to obey those precautionary measures to prevent COVID spread. We stopped to wear our mask. We stopped to uh, observe social distance. We were having mega parties mega religious gatherings all over the whole place. When you have this kind of thing um, in, 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 the, in the midst of a, 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 a second wave of COVID, uh, this is where we have brought ourselves. And that includes political gatherings also, um, if you remember. Yeah. They, they are also to blame. All right. So, <laughs> okay. I... I, um, I, I I'm short of words. You know, there's a lot, you know, that has to be considered. And I was saying to Felicity earlier uh, that I'm hoping that we are very, very sure about the details of this new, you know, possibility of a, of a lockdown and, you know, our peculiar situation. So we're not just copying what other countries might be doing. Um, so I want your quick thoughts on um, how disastrous it might be if we have to go into another lockdown. Um, bear in mind that, of course, there are new restrictions that have been put in place. Um, all the countries have uh, stopped flights from certain, from the UK mostly, but Nigeria, of course, is still getting people in. Um, international flights are still on. Um, so how disastrous might this be for our economy if we have to go into an another lockdown? Um, it's, it's embarrassing, for example, that European countries who are neighbors to the UK are already stopping flights. Uh, into their countries, and we here all the way in Africa uh, have not taken any. I've not taken any decisive uh, move to do that. This is very bad, very bad for us. And I think it's part of the problem we have. We are not taking the right steps for prevention. Rather, we want to lock people down. If we do that, it means that this recession is going to be on for long. When we locked down for the second quarter, we made a shrinkage in GDP of over 2.17 trillion naira for that second quarter when we first locked down. Yes. And as the economy was trying to pick up in the second, I mean the third quarter, we still had a big loss of 1.2 trillion naira GDP shrinkage in the third quarter. Now that we're in the fourth quarter and things are beginning to pick up gradually. If we lock down again, we will go deep into it. And it will take us a while to come up. Then we will now have to start talking about balancing the, the poverty implication of locking down vis-a-vis -vis the health implication of COVID. We did not do our bit in this country. For example, we did not bother to find out why 
we did not go down the way we were meant to go down under the first wave of COVID. What happened? There were supposed to be dead bodies on the street. There were no dead bodies on the street. So what did we do right? Some people said, okay, because we locked down. I didn't know. They locked down all over the world, including America. They locked down before us. And they still have the kind of result that they had. So what did we do right? How can we begin to do more of what we did right? We never bother to investigate that. We just want to do copy and paste. They're locking down the and then uh, maybe there are already increased cases. Before, yeah, before we get so to the too. part, this copy and paste thing doesn't. Uh, before we get to the part about the locking down, for now, what we have is restricted movement. Um, what is your thinking as to government's ability to enforce compliance um, to see what we do with it before we talk about a complete lockdown? Um, do you think that government has the capacity to do what is needed in this time frame? And what is the role of the private sector and the business community to help in uh, with uh, compliance uh, with uh, COVID-19 protocols? Well, interestingly, most of the uh, private sector players have been doing their bit to a certain extent in some segments. If you look at the banks, you look at the supermarkets, you still cannot enter any bank today without wearing your mask. By the door, you will still have to obey, you will still have to sanitize your hands or wash your hands, whatever the case may be. So in some segment of the private sector, we're, we're doing the best. But as far as compliance, enforcing compliance is concerned, Government went to sleep. People in Lagos, for example, have not been wearing masks for like three months. And nobody cared, nobody enforced it. Whether in the buses, in other public places, nobody enforced it. How they are going to be able to come out and do that this time around without resistance from the people? Because while some of these things work in other places, um, it, it's a bit tougher here where people live from hand to mouth and at the level of poverty. Yeah. Um, if we're saying people can no longer gather, that bars should be closed, uh, clubs should be closed, we are already, the, the, the lockdown is already getting in motion. That is the reality. So all those places that are beginning to pick up will start to close down again. And that is where the economy is. Can we look at a way to import what we need to do rather than restrict uh, uh, um, businesses. Enforce means ensure that people are wearing their masks, people are doing uh, uh, social distancing, and all other things that we need to do. Can we enforce that rather than going in this direction of fucking down uh, uh, the entire place all over again? The, the um, you know, and it, this is why I keep saying that we need to look at our peculiar situation. We're not just going to copy and paste whatever we see outside the country. There has to be a peculiar and a strategic way that we address Nigeria's COVID-19 response. Um, earlier in the year, we all saw the effects of no bailout funds, no palliatives, um, the, 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 the poverty that was spread across the country because of the lockdown. Um, and I, I've said it before that we need to be sure that we are ready if we're having conversations about another lockdown. Are we ready and genuinely ready for it and the things that will be required? The government um, claimed that they had spent hundreds of billions of naira during the first lockdown and of course, you know, as it's COVID-19 response. We're expecting that, you know, of course, those figures will once again come up as the response of the government. Um, Bulao, I, I, I want your quick thoughts on strategic um, actions that the government must take to save Nigerians from similar effects uh, from the first lockdown. Do you think we maybe can afford to actually bail out families uh, from the poverty that might arise from this? The United States government is arguing about six hundred dollars or not. You know, can we have a similar response? Can we have a similar response to ensure face masks are worn? Can we have similar response to ensure that uh, sanitizing is done across the country? Well, I, I, I'm not sure if we can afford the kind of bailouts that are going on in other places. We may not even be able to afford the kind of bailout we have already done in, earlier in this. Therefore, we need to think more strategically. Unfortunately, we did not prepare the right level of background that will help us to take decisions that are peculiar, that, are, that we can own and say this is our own peculiar situation. 
we don't we have not done the homework as far as that is concerned. And one of such homework is that we cannot tell with clarity why in the first wave the it wasn't as bad as predicted. In fact, it was yes. far from what was predicted. So the things we did right, we don't know what they were. Was it sanitized? Yes, they sanitized in America too. Was it uh, lockdown? They locked down in Europe as well. So we did not identify those things, and that would not help us. All right. That is why right now what we're doing is jumping on the train of what is going on in Europe and other parts of the world. Because we don't have our own peculiar situation. What, what would your suggestions be? Um, I, know, I know you've you've clearly stated that we cannot do a copy and paste, um, you know, like other countries. But what would your suggestions be from what we can afford? If we can't afford the bailout like, uh, you know, Europe and, and America and, and other places, what can the Nigerian government do um, to keep us safe and to keep us let's, going? Let's, yeah, let's at least go back to enforcement of the preventive measures against COVID. Ensure that people start to wear masks. Some months ago, when you're in a bus, you see everybody wear their mask. Today, nobody does. If you go to some other public places, the same thing. Can we begin to enforce those? If we do that, we can curtail and, 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 and stop the community spread in its track and begin to talk about treating the people who are already uh, uh, infected and, 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 and all that stuff. Uh, but if we just go the way of blocking down businesses, maybe we had better start preparing for another instance. Okay, so the, on top of all of this conversation around lockdown, there is a new variant of the COVID-19 that's been found in London. Um, the flip side of this is the WHO has said that um, um, we, we shouldn't panic, uh, according to them. Um, it's yet to be out of control um, and that they're still studying it. And then you hear from experts that say this strain of COVID-19 might not respond to the vaccine that has already been found. What is your thinking around yeah. this? Should we be concerned and consider, like other countries are doing, to lock, um, lock themselves away from the UK? Or is it just too much um, to be uh, pa um, panicking about? Um, we, sh we should have done that already, in my view. If neighboring European countries to the UK are already closing their borders, and we know we have quite a number of our citizens who normally travel into Nigeria, especially around the season. I have, uh, have, have, have I know a few people who have come in from the UK in the last couple of weeks, you know, and they are coming in every day. So uh, if there is a new variant, even the earlier variant, we don't know when vaccine will be, when it will be our turn to have vaccines for the, for the older variant. Now we are having a new variant. When would the vaccine? So we need to shield our stuff. And, and th this is the duty of government. I, I know it is possible that there are some uh, protection because a lot of them who are decision makers are also very close to the UK. So they have children, they have families in the UK, and they probably don't want them locked down their house or something. But we have to go beyond this uh, uh, parochial way of looking at things and begin to drill further down in the larger interest of the society. If there's a, a new strain, we need to ensure that it doesn't happen. Uh, the the uh, of course earlier we spoke about the 2021 budget um, and um, you know the new budget cycle. Um, can you quickly also share your views on how that budget might you know assist Nigeria during a pandemic? Uh, the, the 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 budget did not have uh, any big consideration for um, for pandemic. Uh, our expectation, uh, if you look closely at that budget, is that pandemic might actually be a thing of the past. Um, so what you're likely to, what we have are elements of things that will have to rebuild uh, the, the, the economy, uh, which is why you have a situation in which we're extending the capital budget into the next year so that we can have a higher level of performance on that capital budget while we also uh, do what is required to be done um, for, 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 for the current year. It's not much. Uh, 30.5 trillion, um, if, if you even look at it, these are what you had last year. If you use the dollar rate last year to convert it 
and you use the prevailing dollar rate to convert this one, you find out that there was cocoa. It's a flat, it's a flat budget. And for us as a nation of 200 million people, we must bake a bigger cake. We must bake a bigger cake. It is always difficult to share two chicken laps amongst three elders, and that is our main problem. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that one, that's one, one very strange analogy. But, um, uh, Mr. Balaho, thank you very much. But what, what we've been talking about government all this while. What about the people? What is our responsibility now that there seem to be real tangible concern about, you know, the spread of the COVID-19? What should we be doing individually? Um, should we, as a people, consider listening to the advice from the federal government to restrict traveling during this festive period? How can we help? In the UK, there is actually a rule that you can have more than two people in your home as part of celebration during the season. Can we try to uh, maybe restrict the parties this Christmas and all of that? What is our role as citizens? Well, our role as citizens, is to ensure we um, take on those preventive measures and obey them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, knowing Nigerians for what we are in this season, I am not sure of how much of don't travel uh, Nigeria will listen to. People who have already made up their mind to travel are going to travel. So we must begin to pass the message on all platforms that Nigeria listen to, uh, the radio, the TV, uh, we also need to use traditional institutions, the religious institutions, to let everybody know that the second wave is real. And there is even the potential that it might be worse than the first wave if we're not careful. Um, so th these are the kind of things we need to start creating awareness and increase awareness about this second wave. Because people have forgotten about COVID, they've moved on. So <laughs> that awareness must come back. Come and as back. individuals, let's play examples. When you go somewhere with your mask on and people are looking at you strange, ignore them. Rather, encourage them to put on their own mask. And and Nigerians, properly. Nigerians have a lot to deal with, um, <laughs> if, we're, if we're being honest. The Nigerian citizen has a lot to deal with and, and COVID-19 you know, regardless of how dangerous it is, um, most times gets lost in the conversation. When the well, Nigerian it, is thinking of survival... We have to survival, put it back in the conversation yeah, because it's you, not just peculiar yeah, to Nigerians the thing is, at this the, time. The, the, the average Nigerian is thinking of survival. And it's not survival from COVID-19, survival from Nigeria itself. Well, it's not a lot to ask at this time to wear a face mask. It's Absolutely. available and very cheap. So, Absolutely. Um, yes, we have a lot to contend with, but this is a crisis situation and we must put up our antis to uh, be able to... Um, save ourselves. We have to be alive Absolutely. in order to struggle. Thank you very much, Mr. Golaho Olojede, as always, for your timely contributions. I hope your coffee Thanks is not cold me. yet. I hope your coffee is not cold yet. Uh, it's cold. I'm going to have to brew another <laughs> Heat one. it up again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy it. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I was just uh, saying that uh, people need to Yes, we need to struggle to survive. Yes, we need to hustle. But these are very little things we can do. If you can't social distance, wear a mask. If you can't wear a mask, they sell hand sanitizers for as low as 100 naira now. Yes. I know it's a huge money for some Face persons. Face also. You know, and there are people that are giving it out for free. If you cannot afford it, look for an environment. There are places, businesses that you go to, and before you step in, they give you a small hand sanitizer. So please... Let's try to be safe, wear your face mask where you can social distance and use your hand sanitizer. If you can't, water is available, wash your hand. That's basically we, what we're saying. We, we will always call on the, on the Nigerian government to take action when necessary. You know, earlier we had spoken about the National Orientation Agency and how they've been a very, very docile agency for more than a decade. You barely know what they do or if their offices still exist. But aside the need to remind, remind the government of where it should step in with the economy, with helping Nigerians survive a pandemic, with bailout funds if necessary, with not hoarding noodles and bags of rice and all of that, um, that, that is one of the most embarrassing things of 2020. So um, aside demanding that the government takes charge where it should take charge, 
um, shuts you know the airports down if necessary. Uh, imposes restrictions where necessary. It's also important that we remind Nigerian citizens that that carefree lifestyle that we live, not caring, not being bothered, not being wanting to be told what to do, is a very dangerous lifestyle. Especially there are now. still nightclubs that are open. And it was still has a carnival going on currently. And it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. If you dr drive out every, you know, tonight or this weekend, I'm sure you would still see some lounges and some clubs secretly open to customers to come in and, and party. Well, and I hope drink there is and, a task force too, because that's the part where government yes. comes in now. It, for those quote, secretly trends. open. So it's 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 <laughs> How yes. How can you be secretly open? Nah, they open. You. They they, they, they send out messages to English they send out messages to special <laughs> customers and say we're open. Oh, you can sneak in, park your car far away, sneak in, you know, and you know, party with us till whenever. It, it, it does happen. Strip clubs. It's even. really unfortunate. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.